Hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. This is my first Valentine's Day party. Anybody? Is this anybody's first Valentine's Day party? Yes. Clap if it's your first Valentine's Day party. So thank you so much. Yes. Just so you know, when it's a the comedy show, you don't have to raise your hand. You just this clap. Year, right? That's how I know that you answered the question. Yeah, I've never done a Valentine's Day party before. I told a lot of people, I'm going to do a Valentine's Day party in Newark. They're like, you know, it's not Valentine's Day. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, brown people time. You know how that works. <laughs> Give it up for the brave karaoke people here, huh? That's very brave. I can't do that. Very good job, yes. You got some good tones there, very nice. Thank you so much for having me uh, tonight. We're just going to do some comedy. We're going to have some fun. We're going to tell some jokes, uh, uh, you know, some Valentine's Day jokes, some political jokes, a little bit of everything. Uh, my name is Sammy. My last name is Obey. Uh, Sammy Obey. My name is a complete sentence. Uh, very easy to remember that way, right? <laughs> Oscar said, "Come perform in Newark." Sammy Obey. Right? That's how you. That's how it works. That's how it works. I want to change Obey to my middle name, though, and make my last name the law. Right? I get pulled over by a police officer. Do you know how fast you were going back there? Sammy obeyed the law. Wow, okay, good point. Everything is good. I always wanted to know what my last name meant uh, growing up because Obey is a word in Arabic. So I asked my grandma when I was young, I said, what does it mean, like funny guy? really smooth. She said, no, it means little slave of God. I said, well, okay, okay. That wasn't in my top five. <laughs> People ask, is Obey your stage name? No, it's my slave name, apparently. <laughs> That's what I go by. But uh, Obey, not a very popular name in America. Um, very popular name in the Middle East. Uh, apparently very popular amongst terrorists because uh, my PayPal has been flagged multiple times for terrorist activity. My bank accounts have been shut down. I'm like, do you really think I'm going to be wiring terrorist money? I have $200 in my account. Please leave me alone. Like, no, they might be wiring you money. I'm like, oh, well, then leave it open. <laughs> but because my, my last name is Obey, it starts with an O. So when I travel, especially with the travel bed right now, I put an apostrophe after the O. <laughs> so I walk into the airport. Top of the morning to you, Sammy Obey. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Yeah, I grew up here in California. My dad grew up in the Middle East, and my mom grew up in the Middle East of Texas. So, yeah, I'm Arab and Texan. <laughs> my blood is pure oil, okay? <laughs> Arab and Texan, I put the y'all and yalla, you know what I'm saying? Arab and Texan. It's weird because I have Arab family in Texas too. It's, it's so weird. I'll just visit them. They'll be doing Arab things. You know, they'll be eating hummus, smoking hookah, and then they're watching the Dallas Cowboys score a touchdown. It's the weirdest sight. They're like, yalla, 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 Cowboys! Where am I, dude? Where am I? <laughs> this is fun. We have a lot of Pakistanis here. Pakistanis? All right. Any, any Indians? Any Indians? Yeah. A couple of Indians as well? Okay. Afghanis? Okay, okay one! Here we go. Two, alright, two! Two Afghanis, a couple of Indians, and Pakistanis all walk into a room. Alright. Hey, I haven't, I haven't performed for a, a brown crowd in a while. <laughs> Feels good. Feels good this time of year. <laughs> Man, it's been an interesting time, huh? Crazy, right? There's been so many protests going on. Protests and then there's counter protests and there's protests of the protests of the protests I'm like, you know say what you will about Donald Trump. He's definitely getting Americans to go outside and walk yeah. <laughs> America has an obesity problem. This might be good for a short bit. Yeah. Oh Man, oh man. I don't believe anything Donald Trump says uh, that's specifically because at the end of every sentence he says unbelievable <laughs> right? You ever listen to what he says? I picked a great staff. They're unbelievable. Like, yeah, I can't believe you picked them either. <laughs> I wanted to look it up just to be sure. I looked up the definition of the word unbelievable. It means unlikely to be true. 
<laughs> and suddenly you, know, you insert that into every sentence he says. The inauguration crowd was huge. It was unlikely to be true. <laughs> yep. Not surprised. Not surprised. I grew up here uh, in, uh, in the Bay Area. I know about that protesting. I went to UC Berkeley. Yeah, we invented the protest there. <laughs> yes, yes. We got some Berkeley people here. You know, you know Berkeley? I majored in uh, applied mathematics, which is why I'm doing comedy right now. Uh, I'm applying it. I've been out of the math game for a little while, so to, math to mathematicians, I'm just a comedian. But uh, to comedians, I'm a mathematician. So my friends all know me as the math guy, which I know sounds really cool. But uh, it is pretty cool, you know? Like, that, I, I'm, I'm the one they rely on to do the math. We go out to eat, we split the bill. How much do I owe you? You're the math guy, $500. <laughs> I'm the math guy. A lot of people hate math, but you can't, you know, you can't avoid math. It's, it's in everything we do, right? If we got rid of math, the world would just fall apart. The economy would collapse. You wouldn't be able to call people. You would have no numbers, right? If we got rid of math, there would be aftermath. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> People hate math in this country. America is one of the worst. America is ranked 33rd in math. Yeah, Japan had to count that for us. That's how bad it is. It's because in America, you call doing math for fun problems. That's what we're telling little children. Hey kids, who's ready for some problems? Like, no! Why would you say that? Call it math snacks or candies or something, anything. Fun for the kids, problems is so confusing. I got enough problems as is. Some guy on the street staring, what's your problem, dude? Uh, two trains are going at the same speed at the same time. <laughs> Trying to figure out when they're getting to the station. That's my problem, what's yours? That's a weird problem, dude. I don't know how to solve that problem. But half of us, half of the world is technically good at math. Half of us are above the 50th percentile. And if you don't know what that means, you're below it. So, you know, brown people are generally very good at math. That's how it works, yes. Yeah, Arabs, to Arabs actually were the ones who invented the numerals, Arabic numerals, right? One, two, three. People in America think they're only called Arabic numerals when they're counted backwards, like three, two, one is actually four as well, so. I'm gonna be doing a lot of jokes like that. I hope you get comfortable with that. My, uh, my dad's from Beirut, Lebanon, which is, um, you, you, you know, I don't know if you guys know much about the Lebanese. Is, uh, Lebanese love to party. They're the party people of the Middle East. Like Beirut, Lebanon, like any other Middle Eastern city, it will get it will get bombed, but they will keep partying. Like that doesn't stop them. Like you can be a big explosion. Like, they're like DJ still there? DJ's like coming up from the dust. Like yes, together, yeah, yeah, let's go. You'll have like a soldier run through with a machine gun. This is a very good song. This is a raise the roof. There is no roof. Okay, but next next time. They love to party, man. My, uh, my grandma was a Palestinian refugee, which was a sad story, but I find it romantic because she fled to Beirut and, and her being a refugee gave my grandpa his opening line. He was like, wanna come back to my place? He's like, you have a place? It was beautiful. <laughs> they met in line at the soup kitchen, so it was online dating. It was the first online dating. <laughs> it's Valentine's Day, come on. Celebrating romance, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good. I feel like we're, we're building momentum. This is good. And Israel-Palestine is such a tricky situation, you know? I'm always thinking about it. It's so complicated because the Palestinians are still mad at the Israelis for taking their land. So then they throw rocks, but they're just giving them more land. You know? Like, we want to hold on to the land, you know? That's how Gaza became a strip. You know? It was... Because it's been 70 years and the Palestinians are still in disbelief. Like, this cannot be real! And the Jews are like, no, this is real. <laughs> but I'm doing my part to promote peace in the Middle East. I'm dating an Israeli woman right now, and she's beautiful. She's out of my league. So I'm like, oh, why are you settling? <laughs> it's got me so occupied. <laughs> She's doing well though, she has a 401k in her <laughs> I bank the Bank of the West, the West Bank. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, thank you. All right, good, we're already, we're already getting into it. This is good, I like this, I like this. 
Yeah, one of my friends, uh, he actually has to go back to Afghanistan where he's from, and he was really sad. And I didn't know, I didn't know what to say to console him. Like I saw the sadness in his eyes. Ah, all I could think of was, just, well, at least now when you fill out one of those forms online and it says what country are you in, you don't have to scroll all the way to the bottom. <laughs> 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 You're always first alphabetically, man. You're always, you're always first. You know, there's so, so much conflict in the Middle East, and then here, here in America, we have the same saying. We always say, peace in the Middle East. Clearly not that effective, you know, probably because it's not a great rhyme. You know, peace and East, that's a weak rhyme. I'm not a rapper, but I think I could do better, right? I think we could do something better than just flashing a peace symbol from 5,000 miles away. How about we all go over there and do something fun, you know, like throw a big barbecue. A feast in the Middle East. Right? Yeah, there we go. A feast in the Middle East. Hey, no pork. Okay. Let's cook any other beast in the Middle East. Make the pita bread rise like yeast in the Middle East. Don't bring your priest to the Middle East. You're like a deceased in the Middle East. You gotta blend in, stay fleeced in the Middle East. Don't buy a camel, get one leased in the Middle East. Let's get taken hostage, get released in the Middle East. So get those pants greased till the fighting will have ceased. And last but not least, we'll have peace in the Middle East. There we go. I'm actually running for president in 2036. Uh, yeah, 2036 is going to be uh, Obey 2036, Make America Great Again, again. Uh, I'm adding another again onto it, pretty much. And I'm going to unite America. I have a, a few cool platforms. First one is my personal favorite. Choose your own income tax rate. <laughs> Think of how awesome this is, right? You choose what you want to pay, you get the services you deserve. America's going to love this. Now, there will be a minimum, right? Like a basic package, 10%. That'll be the basic. You want to pay just 10% to we'll make sure there's a road that goes to your house. You know, it won't be a good road, but it'll be a road. It'll be there. It'll get to your house. You know, you call 911, they'll pick up. That's the 10% package. <laughs> you want to pay 20%, I'll throw in a signed copy of the Constitution, right? If you want to pay 30%, your kids go straight to college, no high school, straight to college. <laughs> you get the value back. 40% go to the zoo, pick any animal you want. It's your pet, it's yours. You pay 40% taxes. 50%, you want to pay 50% taxes once a year. You can slap a DMV employee in the face. <laughs> Just get your license, go home. That's how taxes should be. That's right. Healthcare, I'm going to fix it. See, the problem in this country is uh, you get freedoms at the wrong times. You know, people say you become an adult when you're 18. That's not true. You become an adult when you're 26. Okay, I know this personally. That's when I became an adult. That's when things get real, okay? Because 18, you get a bunch of freedoms. You can smoke, you can vote. 21, you can drink. 25, you can rent a car. You're invincible. 26, off your family's health insurance. <laughs> what are you gonna do now? I'm like, that's not fair. You just gotta be doing all these life-risking things. I need the health insurance back. So that's the solution. I'm gonna get people back on their family's health care. Yeah, everybody's gonna be on their family's health care until you're 65. That's how it's gonna work. Right? That's how it's gonna work. Because, you know, it's more economical for people to stay on the family plans, right? You're just gonna keep it intact, you know? Going back to my family's plan. Anyways, in a nutshell, I'm gonna get you off Obamacare and onto your mama care. Okay? <laughs> In 2036, if you say something racist, you will be fined, okay? Unless it's funny, <laughs> then you can pay a small amount of money, right? <laughs> there will be no more unfunny racism in this country. We're gonna make racism funny again, the way it should be, okay? This is how it works. You say something offensive, you offend someone, they can take you to court where you have to say, well, you just said in front of five people of that race. You have to hear it. And if you offend them, you get fined. But if they laugh, the person who brought you in gets fined. You see how that works? <laughs> you have to write a good job. Even better, I'm gonna fix global warming. I'm gonna fix global warming. Uh, see, the thing is, we're trying to tackle, tackle global warming. We're only one country. We can only tackle country warming, okay? 
So we're going to make America cool again. Right? <laughs> now, the thing is, we have all the weather systems we need in America. They're just in the wrong places, right? Now, we have, we've had an amazing luck with this rain lately, right? The drought is over temporarily, but it's just temporarily. People think it's over forever. Like, that's not how you water plants. You don't starve your plant of water for two years and then just drown it in the tub. That's not how it works, right? So, technically, California is always going to be, you know, moving towards drought because we have a lot of sun, right? Then in the Midwest, they're freezing cold. The Northeast, they've got blizzards, a lot of snow. In the Southeast, too much water. They're having floods every year. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix and match. We're going to share the weather, all right? So we're going to cover parts of California and the Southwest with solar panels. You ever been in that area between the five and the 99? Like, this is ugly. Cover in solar panels, okay? Nevada, one big solar panel, right? It's just going to be all these solar panels. We're going to conduct all the energy through a heat rod to the Midwest and Northeast. It's going to be called the Great American Hot Rod. Can look at it like this. It's going to melt their snow, which drips down to the Southeast, and we collect all the excess water in a duct, which brings it back to the West to feed our crops. Very, very simple contraption. Mexico's going to pay for it. <laughs> if we build a wall, we can build a duck. That's my logic. That's my logic. Immigration's a really hot topic right now. I actually read a survey. They said that 15% of America is immigrants. 15%. And that's just a survey. It could be more. It could be 100%. <laughs> Some people could be lying, right? 15% would mean that 85% of America is Native American. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. Talk to a guy, he's like, I remember the good old days back when immigration was zero. I'm like, yeah, 1491 was great. 1491 was awesome, man. What are you talking about? I heard another survey that says 98% of Americans distrust what they read online. But I read this online, so who knows if it's true? <laughs> who even knows? You can't. Fake news, exactly. There will be no more fake news in 2036. It'll be all my news. <laughs> Sammy Obey news. Good stuff, good sources. All right, okay. Uh, thanks for booking me for this family event, by the way. If you ever need me for just a children's party, I do those as well, too. <laughs> I just do that. You know, kids like jokes on, like, animals and stuff. I do, like, half an hour on cats. Yeah. <laughs> Classic jokes that I wrote myself, too. Like, how does a cat like his steak cooked? <laughs> kids really love me. Kids do love me. I've been really focused lately. I've been on the gluten-free diet for a few weeks now, feeling clear, focused, energetic. Then I ate a waffle. You know what? I felt happy. What was that? <laughs> I've been eating organic, too, but I don't like saying organic. I like saying organic. It's just it's a funner word to say. Just everybody say it really quickly. Organic. Right? I want to change the word. I want to have it spelled with a J. So I'm trying to change the word. So like I'll go to a grocery store and be like, excuse me, are these avocados or jamming? <laughs> and they'll look at me like I'm crazy, but I just double down. I said, are they more jamming? <laughs> and eventually they're just like, well, the customer's always right. I guess they're more jamming. I guess. <laughs> I can even take it a step further. So they have no cholesterol? So what are you talking about? <laughs> Now they'll say organic. You can't unforget organic. I'm mean, gonna try to eat more fruits too. Do you guys know that tomatoes are fruit? Yeah. You know that avocados are fruit? Yeah. You know lemon and lime are also fruits. My friend got mad because he asked me to make fruit salad for his party. I brought guacamole. <laughs> Good fruit salad. I was in front of a grocery store. Some guy's like, "Hey man, do you have a moment to help save the environment?" I said, "Absolutely." So he gave me a pamphlet. I recycle it right away. <laughs> then another guy was like, hey man, do you have a moment to stop child hunger? I was like, well, I'm not a child, but I can eat. <laughs> he said, no, I, I meant to have a hundred dollars to sponsor a child every month. I'm like, whoa, that's a completely different question. <laughs> We're having a moment. Like, I got a lot of moments. I don't have that many hundreds, you know. I, I don't make hundreds in a moment, so I don't know how you calculated that. I was just curious, like, how much money do you make doing this? He's like, well, I raise about $30 every day for the kids. I'm like, only 30? He's like, look, man, I work. I make 50 an hour at my job, but I have to work part time so I can come out and do this. I'm like, you make 50 an hour? If you just stayed at your job, worked full time, 
and donated half of your own money, you could save way more kids. <laughs> and save us from this uncomfortable, confusing conversation. Let's be honest, we're gonna save a lot of people from a lot of different things today. He was like, whoa, that's amazing how you just put that all together. I'm like, yeah, it's called taking a moment to stop child hunger. Uh, what can I say, I'm a math guy. I just always get so confused when I'm at grocery stores, you know, because they say these things that don't really make sense when you think about them. Like I'm checking out with the cashier. Cashier's like, did you find everything okay? I'm like, yeah, I found everything, I'm checking out. <laughs> there were some things I didn't find, I just gave up. <laughs> these were the things I settled for. <laughs> because you know, if you didn't find something okay and you say that, they'll go get it for you. <laughs> It's a free finder service. Now I go to the grocery store, I don't even shop. I just go straight to checkout. <laughs> like, you find everything okay? Well, let's see here. It's an avocado, it's a mushroom or more jelly. And then she's like, okay, well, would you like to donate a dollar to the Make-A-Wish Foundation? Uh, would you like to give me a back rub? <laughs> Feels kind of awkward saying no, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's good. It's fun. It's fun. I'm getting recorded right now for YouTube. Uh, it's good. Great. Hashtag the next Russell Peters. <laughs> who's like who's like the biggest Pakistani comedian? Is there one? Who? Who? Yeah, like who's like the big or is there is there a, I, I have Omar Sharif, but he's a he's like more of an actor, comedic actor, right? He does stand up too? Is he Pakistani? Is he from Pakistan? No, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. Okay, we're having a debate now on whether Omar Sharif is Pakistani or not. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Whoa, which one? Ah, okay. Alright, well, I'm not sure which one they're talking about. Let's just say one's a comedian and one's not. Okay. Anyways, we need more Pakistani comedians out there, that's what I'm trying to say. So that's my message to the kids. Okay, my son is uh, Pakistani. Yes. Your son's Pakistani? And he's a comedian? Yes. Awesome, how old is he? Thank you so much. You can tell. Thank you so much. You know him for us. For us? For us? I was just with him last night. Oh. That's so great. Oh, nice to meet you. Have we met before? Yes, we have. Okay, yeah, yeah, good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See how I worked at it? Raz is a great comedian. We were just together the other night at uh, Hermosa Beach. Yeah, two brown guys in a very white city. <laughs> and we both did really well. Great, great, great. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah, more Pakistani comedians. You know, brown people, we're all very similar. We're very clean people. We, we take off our shoes when we go in our houses, you know. That's why airport security checks just make us feel at home. You know? yeah. <laughs> Take my shoes off, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> I was at the airport, they hired a Middle Eastern guy for airport security. We just looked at each other all confused. I was like, do you want me to search you first? <laughs> How does it work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I thought I had a hard growing up when I was traveling, I don't. My uncle's name, true story, my uncle's name is Jihad. <laughs> right? That's a name that they give each other in Arabic speaking countries. Very popular name in the 60s and 70s. Not so much anymore. <laughs> but you know, Jihad just means struggle, right? And now the terrorists mess it up, so it, to Americans it translates to you know? And now it's a struggle to travel with my uncle. Can you imagine? A grown Middle Eastern man has to walk into an airport and the TSA a laminated piece of paper with the word jihad on it. Like, what, what can you possibly say at that point? Like, it's a struggle. <laughs> and my uncle walks very fast. He walks so fast, I have to yell for him to slow down. I can't yell jihad in a crowded airport. <laughs> <laughs> Glad y'all are laughing. Laughter is very good for you. You know, if you laugh for ten minutes straight, it burns.
burns 50 calories. So we're all at the gym tonight. Yeah, I'm your personal trainer. So you know that. Faraz is a trainer, actually. He's a trainer and a trainer. That's great. Yeah. But I always, you know, I always cut people off at about 20 minutes. I let there be a little moment of silence because it's dangerous to laugh for a long period of time. There was once a man in London who died because he laughed for 25 minutes straight. He had a heart attack. I'm not proud of this, but I, I can kill people. And, uh, this is how I impress women. Like it's a dangerous job. Every joke I tell is like a bullet. Pop, pop, you know? They're like, Sammy, you're not even that funny. And I'm like, yeah, because I care. <laughs> I was a teacher. I was a teacher for six years. Uh, anybody here a teacher? Teaching? 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 You're very polite. Oh, we're all teachers? Is that what I did? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a very hard job being a teacher. You know it's hard being a teacher when I quit that to do this. Yeah. I was teaching in Oakland, in the inner city. I, I had gang members in my class. I don't know if we have any uh, gang members here tonight. <laughs> But I had to come up with street analogies to make my lesson plans relatable. So, in, for instance, we were studying math, the different kinds of numbers. I was like, all right, here's how you remember the different kinds of numbers. Imagine you're at a party, all the numbers are there. This crazy number comes in and just starts flipping over tables. You're like, what's your problem? He's like, I'm irrational. <laughs> okay. Now, you're irrational numbers. You're like, chill, man, we're both some real numbers, all right? <laughs> Put it right there, my number. Put it right there, my number. All the squares root for you. Root, 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 root. root. <laughs> you see this girl just floating by. He's like, dang, I want to get her digits. Nah, man, you can't. She's imaginary. <laughs> When imaginaries and reals mix, things get complex, man. Her last boyfriend was a zero. She never got over him, man. It was impossible. You can't get over a zero. Their relationship was undefined. Now your ex comes in. Your ex comes in with some other unknown. You're like, why? <laughs> if she two times me, I'm getting even, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'll find a girl in her prime, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 53, 59. When it comes to age, I got no limit. Hop into my infinity. Let's get some pie. Having a good time here. Glad you came out. Oh my God. So there's, like, there's like a very small zone I can stay in to do this properly. Uh, it's great. Yeah, it's been such an interesting political time lately. I uh, went to a family reunion, my mom's family in Texas, uh, over the holidays. It was super awkward because uh, my mom has three brothers, one family Trump supporters, one family Hillary supporters, another family Gary Johnson, <laughs> and then me and my family were Bernie Sanders. So for an hour, we just sat there and talk smack about Ted Cruz. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> That's how you bring a family together in these tough political times. You start with Ted Cruz, you finish with Chris Christie. The fail proof plan brings the family together. I really like Bernie Sanders. I hope he makes it like lives. I, uh, I think he might be dying of dehydration. I'm not exactly sure what the condition is, but his voice would get drier and drier in every speech. He'd be like, and then Hillary, and then we're gonna take that Wall Street. Like, give him some water, man. His throat's still on the burn, man. <laughs> I think Donald, Donald Trump just had a rally. Uh, in, I was thinking it was in Florida. It was like today or uh, yeah. It's funny that he's still having rallies after he's already been elected. If this keeps going, I think I'm going to go to one of those rallies because I think if I go, I'm going to get a lot of FaceTime on the camera. <laughs> you know, I'll show up to the rally. They're going to be like, who's this ethnic guy supporting Donald Trump? Like, it's me! Ah! Just make crazy faces into the camera. Like, you're fired! You're fired! Ah! Wear a shirt that says Muslims for Trump. They're like, who the hell is this guy? And on the back it says Obey 2036. <laughs> Self-promotion. Oh my god, sorry. Sorry about that. It happens. It's been a really weird week too. I found out that my neighbors were stealing my Wi-Fi, my internet. Yeah, in my apartment complex. I had to scare them off. I changed the network name to I Know Where You Live, you know 106. <laughs> 
They still try to log on, these monsters. I had to change the network name to ISIS. I had to. <laughs> because I dare someone to click yes on do you want to join ISIS. <laughs> They'll be freaking out as soon as they do. You are now connected to ISIS. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's how I got on the no-fly list. <laughs> I do have to drive a lot for this uh, comedy thing. A lot of driving. I get road rage when I drive. Anybody here get road rage? It affects perfectly normal people, right? You look so sweet and innocent, but behind you, know, behind the wheel, you never know what can happen. And it's not our fault. Scientists have shown that if people see a lot of the color red, we get angry. All of our taillights are red. So we're getting splashed with red, just constantly, and stop and go traffic. You're going to You're just getting angry at the person in front of you. We just have to change the color of the taillight. You know, like ocean blue. Ah, oh, refreshing. Lavender. Ah, oh, who wants to snuggle? You know? It's, just got to change the color. I drive all the time, and yet I don't know a lot about cars. It's really embarrassing. Like last week, I got a flat tire right next to a homeless man, so I was looking at him for help. <laughs> For once, it was like opposite world. He's like, spare change? I'm like, change spare? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. It's hard writing jokes nowadays, you know. America is changing so fast, the future's going to be so different. So I'm trying to write jokes now that are going to kill in like 50 years. You guys want to hear one? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do this one. It's very futuristic, but it's going to kill here in America. Like, you know, 50 years. ¿Por qué el pueblo gusta la calle? Press 2 for English. Thank you so much. Mexico actually recently got the new version of the iPhone. It's called the IA iPhone. This is a fun one. I got bored last week. I wrote my will. I wrote everything goes to my grandma because I love her, and then I sent it to her in case she's trying to write her will soon. <laughs> my mom hates that joke. I'm like, you're next. <laughs> my, uh, my grandpa fought during World War II. Uh, he was a boxer. He wasn't in the war. He fought. Uh, it's totally unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> All my grandparents are still alive, which means I got pretty good genes. Uh, which is a good thing. Good thing, I guess. But I still crash with my parents when I come here in, in Fremont. I don't care. It's the end thing with a generation, you know? I'll probably let my kids live with me, you know? Because I'll still be at my parents' house. <laughs> my dad's like, where's my rent? I'm like, where's my allowance? You know? <laughs> I just wash the dishes. <laughs> I'm on healthcare, so. <laughs> I read somewhere that uh, when we die, we all grow taller. This is, this is a really weird fact, but I read that after we pass away, we all grow like three to five inches because we lay flat for so long, which is crazy. A little growth spurt. Like if they show the growth, the growth charts, like you, get, you grow as a team, and then you kind of dip off, so you go over and just go, <laughs> yeah, you just go like that. Yeah, nobody tells you about that part. Whenever a girl's like, how tall are you? I'm like, shoot, 6'4", casket. <laughs> casket, <Gasket. laughs> My friend's 5'9". He's like, man, I would die to be 6 feet. I'm like, well, <laughs> you could. <laughs> Nowadays with online dating, you know, with dating profiles, a lot of women are always requesting they want a tall guy. Like, I want a guy who's six feet or taller. Like, I didn't know you could demand how much of a person you want. <laughs> you know, I want a guy who's six feet or taller. You're only five feet tall. How much taller do you need them to be? That's just weird. It would be weird if a guy was requesting the opposite, like he wanted a really smaller woman. Like, I want a woman who's 4'11 or shorter. I want to be able to look straight ahead and not even see her. <laughs> Just know that she's there. That is so weird. I want to get a six feet taller. I like to wear heels. I like to go out barefoot. Really close to the ground. Oh man, it's so weird. I met a girl on an online dating site. She said, I'm fluent in sarcasm. 
I was like, oh, that's really cool. She's like, thank you. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're really not, or I just use sarcasm. <laughs> I recently read that there's a billion people in this world who each live on a dollar a day. <sighs> Why can't one of them be my girlfriend, you know? <laughs> I can afford that. Oh, man. Good times. Good times. 2036, everybody. <laughs> 2036. It's coming sooner than you know. Yeah. I'm not ready to have kids just yet because um, I'm not ready to quit t texting and driving. Yeah. It's something you have to give up when you have kids. Yeah, I was really scared recently because I, uh, I was sending a very short text and I put my phone down and I looked up as I was pulling into my driveway and there was a woman pushing a stroller. Yeah. I was scared. I, I could have hit her, but at the same time, she was pushing her stroller through a driveway. I'm like, why did she not notice? I look at her. She's on her phone. <laughs> pushing the stroller. Yeah. She's texting while strolling. That shouldn't be illegal. <laughs> I'm like, this poor baby with a negligent mother. Then look at the baby. He's on his phone, too. Just not <laughs> wow. These are the times we're living in now. I'm on my phone all the time. Sometimes I get bored. I'll just text random numbers and talk to strangers. Just pick a random 10 digit number like 426-371-4271. Hey, want something from the store? <laughs> Usually they're like, who the hell is this? But every now and then one guy's like, oh yeah, could you give me some bread? And, oh. like, of course, that's what friends are for. <laughs> one time I was like, hey, do you want something from the store? He's like, I'm already at the store. What do you want? <laughs> I panicked. I was like, uh, one yellow onion. I don't want to say nothing. He's like, why? I'm like, I'm making spaghetti. He's like, but you hate spaghetti. I'm like, bro, you don't even know me. He's like, you always say that. I'm like, this time it's for real. <laughs> Anyways, I'll be home soon. <laughs> Make sure it's organic. <laughs> organic. But there's a lot of etiquette when you text people, especially, you know, when it comes to romance. And uh, since it's Valentine's Day, maybe all the guys in here should learn this because I had to learn the hard way. Uh, I was dating a girl who would always text me, moi. Do you guys know what moi means? It means kiss. Which is totally counterintuitive, because I never heard a kiss that sounds like moi. <laughs> <laughs> never come up to someone and go, moi! <laughs> it's a weird kiss. But that's apparently what it means. But I didn't know that because I saw it spelled out. M-U-A-H. I thought it was the evil laugh. <laughs> I thought every night she was texting me, sweet dreams! Mwah! <laughs> like, what's gonna happen in my sleep? She's evil. Everything she texts, I'm about to board this plane! Mwah! Get her off that plane now! She's a villain! Then I found out it just means kiss. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. She was like, yeah, when I send water, you're supposed to send water back. It's polite. I was like, I can do this, no problem. One times a hundred, boom. Does that cover me through August? How does that work? She was like, no, and I want you to start texting me, I miss you. I was like, okay, I can do that. How am I supposed to know when? <laughs> She's like, what, you don't miss me? I'm like, well, not right now, <laughs> at the moment. It's kind of hard, you know, to miss you right now. So maybe you could just remind me when to miss you. Because <laughs> I don't think people really miss other people. I think we just get bored with our situation and we choose someone to direct the boredom at, you know? That's what it is. I just text, I'm in boredom with you, you know? <laughs> She's like, fine, just text I miss you when I said I miss you. So okay, can you do that? But then she would sneak in other things, like she would text me, XOXO. I'm like, oh, is this tic-tac-toe? What is this? <laughs> She's like, no, send XOXO back. I'm like, you want me to just repeat the exact same message that you send every time? So I just gave her an email address that doesn't exist. So whatever message she sends, she just bounces right back. <laughs> She's like, who the hell is Mailer Demon? Mailer <laughs> Demon. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right, I'm about to get out of here in a few moments, um, but thank you so much for coming out, and uh, if you ever need to, thank you so much. I can, I can just drink water all day. Yeah. I, um, I'm a huge klutz, I'm surprised I haven't fallen or anything. 
Like I have a, Gravity and I have an abusive relationship. <laughs> Whenever I show up to my friends, I'll have like bruises and scars. My friends are like, Sammy, did Gravity do that to you? <laughs> like, you don't know Gravity like I do, man. It puts me down to earth. Like, how hard does he hit you? 9.8 meters per second. <laughs> <laughs> that was for the scientists in the room. Uh, how many in here is this like your first comedy sh comedy performance, live comedy performance ever? Anybody? Okay, everybody here has been to the comedy clubs. <laughs> That's good. Are you, you guys go to comedy a lot? See comedy? No, not a lot. How, how many of you is this your second comedy show? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, it's this? Very serious, I know. I've never seen such a serious response to such a comedic question. <laughs> okay. I did a comedy show uh, recently. Guess who was there? Prime Minister of Canada. Yeah, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. He's like, Sammy! I forgot his name. I forgot his name. I never felt more American in my life. <laughs> I couldn't name a world leader, even when he was right in front of me, saying my name. He's like, you were really funny. I was like, Trudeau, Trudeau. <laughs> good, good, good. So yeah, 2036, uh, if anybody has any platforms they want to write down on a piece of paper, you can hand to me after the show. And I'll take them into consideration for planning for 2036. Uh, another one I should mention is that Social Security, right now you get it at 62, I'm gonna cut that in half, 31. <laughs> That's not another added bonus. Because Social Security was created in 1935 and life expectancy was like 55. It was a huge ripoff. Like there was only a 20% chance you could even live to get it. I think that's why life expectancy increased, because people are like, I want to wait around and get this money. <laughs> Social Security is basically a job that pays you to live to 65. And I want to be your known for that. Good. But the environment is definitely, definitely a big one. Definitely a huge one. I have a friend who's an environmentalist. He's always complaining. He's like, the polar bears have feelings too. The polar bears are just like people. When the ice caps melt, where are the polar bears gonna go? I'm like, come on, if bears are just like people, I'm sure the polar bears will be okay, right? <laughs> no, because I figure we'll just take land from the grizzly bears, have the black bears do all the work, and have the panda bears build the railroad. <laughs> That's not racist, it's a bear joke. There's no bears joke. It's hypothetical. Bears make a country called America. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, when it comes to the environment, I take the Native American philosophy, which is my favorite. The Native American said the best. They said that we don't inherit this land from our parents, but we borrow it from our children. Beautiful. And that's why we should keep the land looking good for our kids and future generations. I love this. I live by it all the time. Like the other day, my mom came up to me, she's like, Sam, you're 33 years old, you need to get out of our house. I said, look, mom, this is neither my house nor your house. <laughs> it is my children's house. <laughs> so use a coaster, okay? Thank you so much. I'm Sam Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. One more time for us, though, for putting this all together. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. One more time. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, uh,